Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 388. On Now You Know. Thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring this episode. Delete Me is a hands-free subscription service that will remove your personal information that's being sold online. So in the past, we've talked about how easy it is to find personal information online. That information can open you up to all sorts of risks, including financial risks related to data brokers selling our data, identity theft, and personalized scams. Delete Me's privacy experts remove you from hundreds of data brokers all year long. When you sign up, you will get a privacy report in seven days outlining what information they found and deleted. Delete Me will work to remove all your personal data like phone numbers and addresses, even photos, email addresses, and lists of relatives. The experts will monitor sites and repeat removal as needed, and users can make custom removal requests. Since the ways companies collect, share, and sell your data is constantly changing, they believe online privacy solutions must continuously improve and evolve to address these challenges. Delete Me's mission is simple, to remove your information from search results. You have the right to own, manage, and remove personal information from public access. Sign up for Delete Me via our link in the description. Use our code NYK20 to get 20% off. Thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring this episode. So there was this narrative implanted in many people's brains by the Tesla Fudsters starting back about 2018, that because Tesla gets paid money from other auto companies their competitors, for regulatory credits, that for some reason, that means the Tesla isn't really profitable. I think by now, five or six years later, that stupid narrative has been debunked. Tesla is highly profitable, but getting paid by your competitors because they can't make enough clean cars sure is icing on the cake. And well, Tesla's cake just got some more icing. In the latest 10K filing with the SEC, we learned that Tesla got another $1.79 billion in revenue from regulatory credits in 2023. Now, Tesla's former CFO, Zachary Kirkhorn, has said that Tesla will eventually stop getting this revenue as Tesla's competition eventually starts making and selling enough zero emission cars. But let's get real here for a minute. Tesla sold 1.3 million EVs in the U.S. in 2023. Now, how many did GM sell? About 76,000. That is 17 times fewer cars. And it's not like this was the first year that GM was making and selling EVs. That's a really good point. GM has been making the Chevy Bolt since 2017. That's seven years to get to 76,000 EVs sold annually. Do you know how much Tesla has grown sales in that same time period? Tesla sold about 50,000 EVs in the U.S. in 2017. So that means that Tesla, this new startup with one factory in 2017, was able to grow EV sales from 50,000 to 1.3 million in seven years. And GM could only grow from zero to 76,000 in seven years. And because Jim Farley, CEO of Ford, has done such a horrible job producing zero emission cars, they've had to pay Tesla for regulatory credits every year. In fact, according to Bloomberg, Tesla has earned $9 billion in revenue since 2009 in regulatory credits from its competitors. Now, will Tesla go bankrupt when they no longer get paid these regulatory credits by their competitors someday in the future? No, of course not. Like we said, this is just icing on the cake. And the longer Tesla's competitors take to mass produce EVs, the more billions of dollars will be paid to Tesla's coffers. Now, we've been telling you about this advantage that Tesla has for years. So Tesla made $1.7 billion in regulatory credits in 2023. How much did they make in 2022? Uh, They brought in $1.7 billion there, too. I mean, I remember back in 2018 when some of the Fudsters and analysts were predicting that the credits were going to run out any quarter. Yep. And now seven years later, the money keeps rolling in. Thank you, GM, Ford, and VW, and others who can't make EVs at scale. We here at Tesla appreciate the cash going into our bank account every quarter. If you follow Tesla car pricing, then you know it's bumpy. Prices generally go down over time, but it's lumpy with occasional price increases, especially when parts in the chain have price increases themselves. Well, now Tesla appears to be trying a new price strategy. We saw this on their configurator page for the Model Y in the U.S., Says the new Model Y rear-wheel drive and the long-range all-wheel drive prices reduced for deliveries now through February 29th. Prices will increase by 1000 or more on March 1st. And Tesla tweeted out, more affordable than you think. World's best-selling SUV is $1,000 off this month. Prices will go up in March. So a temporary U.S. price cut? Yeah. With the $1,000 price drop, you can now get a Model Y rear-wheel drive starting at $42,990 or $35,490 with the federal tax credit. 
Wow. And I saw that in Canada, Tesla has been lowering prices also. So now with price cuts of $4,000 in Canada, all three variants now qualify for the $5,000 Canadian federal rebate there too. Yeah, that's big news for Canadians. And Elon said, since most people don't love to buy cars in the middle of winter, Tesla is offering a $1,000 incentive to do so. This is the essential quandary of manufacturing. Factories need continuous production for efficiency, but consumer demand is seasonal. So take advantage of Tesla's quandary and get $1,000 off. I mean, but that's an amazing price. $35,000 with the tax credit for yeah. a Model Y. The best-selling car in the world. That's insane. I wonder why it's the best-selling car. So could this temporary price drop have something to do with the news that the Model Y is not getting a refresh this year? Yeah, it's possible. According to an internal email obtained by Drive Tesla Canada, Tesla let employees know that, quote, it is important we communicate transparently that there is no refresh for the Model Y launching this year. So how do you think this is going to affect Model Y demand? I mean, now that the federal tax credit applies right off the sticker price, I do believe that in the U.S. that alone is going to drive a lot of demand this year. As we've discussed before, dropping the price of a car by $5,000 doubles the number of people who can afford it. So the $7,500 federal tax credit is really opening up the market for the Model Y. I don't think Tesla is going to have any problems moving them in 2024 here in the U.S. Yeah, I feel like there aren't enough people who want a Model Y and yet are also going to be pedantic enough to wait for a refresh of the Model Y. Well, yeah, I think most people that are going to be buying the Model Y this year and beyond are people who've never even heard of it before. And I think as long as the refresh is longer than one year away, I mean, we're kind of used to car companies exactly. changing the cars every year. So as long as it's more than a year away, I feel like you're not going to be like, wait, next year they're going to have the 2025? Yeah. It's like, yeah. I don't think it's that big a deal, but I'd be curious to hear about your thoughts. Let us know in the comments below. So Tesla Europe and Middle East posted, we're expanding the supercharger network in Iceland by 20 sites in collaboration with N1, taking the total to 29 locations with over 200 stalls over the next few years, or in other news, road trips go brrr. Currently, there are nine supercharger locations in Iceland with about 3,890 Teslas registered in the country. Yeah, Tesla has become the best-selling car brand in Iceland with a 20% market share. And this is one of Tesla's strengths. They have been quickly and quietly taking over many places on Earth because their products are so damn good. Now, the Tesla Post referred to N1. What is N1? N1 is the largest gas station operator in Iceland. They have over 90 gas stations there. So when these new superchargers are built, about 20% of N1's gas stations will also have chargers. Right. I mean, that's a smart move by N1 because just look at the math. Iceland is quickly transitioning to electric transportation. If you're a gas station operator and you don't adopt a new technology, you're going to be out of luck in a few years. Although, <laughs> if you're not running the pumps anymore, you know, I guess all you're going to have is the convenience store. I yeah. haven't been to Iceland, so I, I looked don't it know. up. Yeah, most of the N1s have convenience stores, and that's probably how they make most of their money. Because remember, gas stations throughout the world don't make much money on the gas. Right. China's Passenger Car Association has released January sales data. Tesla sold 31,556 vehicles in China and exported another 39,891 cars abroad. Now, as much as I like numbers and spreadsheets, my brain really absorbs numbers better when I can see them in context. Here's Roland Percher's chart of Tesla January sales from 2020 at the top to 2024 at the bottom. Nice. Much easier to see with a chart like this. Um, so this was Tesla's China's best January ever, up 49% over the same month last year. Model Y is now the fifth best-selling car in China. Here's a chart of accumulated Tesla sales in China per year and month. Blue is last year. Now, anyone want to place your bets for how many cars Tesla sells in China this year? Wow. So last year it was just over 600,000 cars. Um, I'm going to guess 750,000 this year. Hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let us know down below. Hey, and if you like the show, please hit the like button. It really helps us out. Just takes a second. Well, we told him we wanted him to do it, folks. So is it a surprise that Tesla has started advertising Tesla on X? The big pushback on X seems to be that everyone on the X platform already knows about Tesla. So why bother? They job no bother. But what do you think? Let us know down in the comments. Now, just for context, guess how much Toyota spent on advertising last year? Um, I know it's a lot. 1.7 billion. How about Ford? Ford spent 1.8 billion. GM spent $4 billion. Advertising intelligence firm Vivix estimated that Tesla spent, get this, $151,947 on advertising in 2022. <laughs> That's um three, four, four orders of magnitude? What are we, what, that's so many orders of magnitude that the number itself of orders of magnitude would almost be as much money as Tesla spent on advertising. I love that it's $947. Like, don't spend $151,948. That would be too much.
Now, I, I don't think that everyone on X knows about Tesla. Ooh. Knows. Especially if by knows, it means that they know how much a Tesla Model Y costs, for instance. Yeah, I mean, this particular X ad focuses on the Model Y's five-star safety rating, the range at 310 miles, the fact that it's the most American-made and the best-selling car in the world, and that the price is now 36490 dollars with the federal tax credit. I bet a lot of people don't know about that stuff. And even, again, even if you know about all of this stuff, advertising still works. I mean, for example... I bet that you still know that McDonald's exists, but they still have to advertise to you anyway. And, well, it's, and it's not because you're like, I have never heard of this before. What could this mean? And, no, no. It's because you go like, oh, now I want that. And here's the thing. I'm on X all the time. I don't see ads for Tesla. I think it's because they target them. And if you target them well, you target them to people who don't know about it, but maybe in the market for a new car. Right. But we have a poll coming up from Patreon to see if you guys agree or not. Okay, so what is this I'm hearing about the new Tesla over-the-air update, also including ultra-wideband support for some phones? First of all, what is ultra-wideband? Ultra-wideband, or UWB, is similar to Bluetooth in the fact that it uses radio waves to transmit received data. Okay, then why not just use Bluetooth? Well, there are four main differences between UWB, which takes longer to say than ultra-wideband, and Bluetooth. Okay, what are they? Ultra wideband has a shorter range, usually around 10 meters, than uh, Bluetooth, which can reach up to 100 meters in some cases. That has never been my experience. Okay, so that sounds worse. Well, ultra wideband has a much higher data transfer speed than Bluetooth. Okay. It uses less power than Bluetooth, so okay. it's a lot more energy efficient. And then lastly, and probably most importantly, accuracy. Ultra wideband has better location and positioning capabilities than Bluetooth, making it more precise for applications like indoor navigation and tracking. Okay, so that seems like UWB is better in data transfer speeds, power consumption, and accuracy, but worse in range. Right, and so Tesla says in the release notes, ultra-wideband technology is now available for phone key, so your vehicle and phone key can communicate with greater accuracy to more responsively lock, unlock, and open automatic doors. Oh, that's great. All right, so I'm going to go try that. Well, you can't. Why not? Two reasons. Number one, you don't have an iPhone. Oh. It requires iPhone 11 Plus. Oh, okay. Tesla says that they will be extending support for Android phones that have uh, ultra-wideband soon. And only the upgraded Model 3, the 2023 Model X, and the Cybertruck have the ultra-wideband hardware. Okay, so maybe when we get our Cybertruck, we can try it out then. Yeah, we'll have to see if it improves the reliability of locking and unlocking the vehicle, and if it enhances the selection of driver profiles. I mean, I guess this is good in kind of those odd cases where, like, you and I might get in the car, we both have the phone key to that car, but I'm the driver today, and it thinks you're the driver, right, because it doesn't know how far away the phone is. So you're saying now maybe with more accurate positioning it knows that i'm the driver and it puts the seat in the right position for me yeah and i don't think that it's a a weird use case at all i think that if two people own a car which is fairly common and you know both people get in the car which again is going to be fairly common that one person's going to be sitting in the driver's seat another person's going to be sitting in the passenger seat and up until now i think it would have either been whoever got to the car first, first. or you know whichever had the stronger bluetooth which could depend on your phone mm -hmm. so i think that this could be really nice especially if it can kind of work out who's sitting where Public service announcement, folks. Valentine's Day is tomorrow, Wednesday. And if you have any last minute shopping to do, we have you covered. Climate Exchange's eighth annual EV raffle tickets are still on sale and they make the perfect gift for your Valentine. Or if you just want to treat yourself. Treat yourself. When you buy a raffle ticket, you'll immediately receive an email and text message, meaning it won't get caught up in shipping delays. What could be a better Valentine's Day gift than a sexy electric car or truck? I mean, I'd take that over a box of chocolates any day. The raffle's grand prize winner will have their pick of any EV on the market worth up to $112,835 which is the price, of course, of a fully loaded Tesla Model X Plaid. Plus, as a gift to you, Climate Exchange will pay all the prize taxes so you don't have to. Along with the brand new EV, the winner will get an extra $5,000 in charging support to help pay for and install a home charger or to use on the road. Even if you don't win the grand prize, Climate Exchange's raffle has cash prizes for second through fifth place. So you're really getting five chances to win with each ticket you buy. Climate Exchange has been running this raffle for eight years, and we're getting closer to their drawing date later this month. They're only selling 5,000 tickets, and they sell out every year early. So buy your ticket now so you don't miss out on your shot at your dream EV. Even if you don't buy the winning ticket, your purchase is still going towards a great cause. So buy your tickets now at carbonraffle.org, and they can email them straight to whoever they're for. No gift wrap required.
Good luck. So Europeans can now drive electric pickup trucks. Ford has begun deliveries of their F-150 Lightning in Europe. I'll bet you can't guess where the first ones were delivered. Um, Norway? Yep. Dog and Angela here posted them taking delivery of their new Lightning last week. By the way, Dog and Angela were originally from Texas, but moved to Norway. Man, they're really excited about their new truck. That's going to be us when we get our new Cybertruck. <laughs> and speaking of Cybertruck, it's time for the Cybertruck Roundup. Yeehaw! The Cybertruck Roundup. How about a Cybertruck snowmobile? Dave Sparks, a.k.a. Heavy D Sparks on YouTube and Instagram, has built this. Now, he already put a bus on tracks. No sign of the video yet on YouTube of the Cybertruck, but I'm sure it's coming. That's going to be really cool. And the Chicago Auto Show posted that the Cybertruck will be on display at the Chicago Auto Show at the McCormick Place Convention Center until February 19th. And this was not on their original website, so people didn't know that it was going to be there. It's a surprise. Oh. Surprise. <laughs> Now, we haven't even gotten our Cybertruck yet, but Tesla has already rolled out the first Cybertruck over-the-air software update, 2024.2.3. Now, of course, it implements the new bigger font size to comply with the NHTSA recall. But there are some new improvements to the ride and handling. It says get a more consistent response on different road surfaces and greater comfort on rough winding pavement in sport mode or when custom ride and handling is set to focused. Also expect reduced pitch and roll in the off-road mode. And there's more efficient charging. It says your vehicle now adjusts to the power level of each DC charging station, so battery preconditioning when you're navigating to a charger and then charging can be more efficient. There's also custom lock sounds, automatic blind spot camera, castle doom bed, and more. Now, Unplugged Performance took a Cybertruck off-roading at the King of the Hammers event at the Joshua Tree National Park in California on Saturday, and... Uh, they broke a rear steering bolt. Now you might be saying rear steering bolt. Well, don't forget cyber trucks have rear steering, which helps tighten the turning radius and really helps with maneuvering when towing. Now I'm so excited to get our cyber truck. I'm just going to check one more time to see if it's coming yet. Okay. Uh, not yet. Okay. Um, I mean, it's kind of par for the course though, to break something when you're off-roading like this. So don't, don't be upset, right? Because especially at an event like this, that is considered one of the toughest off-road racing events in the world, they were pushing the vehicle to its limits, obviously, because they broke something. Yeah. And we've seen this happen quite regularly with the R1T during off-roading to front steering linkages. Because they don't have rear steering linkages. But if you're worried that the Cybertruck wasn't tough anymore. Uh -huh. If you're not tough enough to stop the rock. Don't worry. Check this out. In three, two, one. Oh man, nothing. Wait, that was a steel ball. Yeah. He threw a steel ball at the window uh, and it just bounced up. Not just once. Did you do it again? Last time. That Twice. Wow, now, do you think he just like tossed it? Like we don't get to see his arm really. Was that a Franz throw? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter, okay? That's insane. I didn't know this, right? So at the delivery event, all they threw was a baseball. Right. The they backed off on the steel ball. Right. Um, but we just saw it. Now, that was a stainless steel ball, so it's less dense than regular Are you going to do that to our truck? You guys going to have to let us know in the comments. I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, the diameter is going to have a really big impact. Yeah, but that looked like the same size that Franz originally threw. It definitely did. And uh, yeah, bounced right off. Wow. All right, well, for all of your Cybertruck stuff, go to the Cybertruck Owners Club. They help sponsor the show, and they've got everything you want to know about Cybertruck there, along with... They have deliveries and an orders page. Yeah. So if you take delivery or if you know of someone who took delivery, please get them to fill out that form so that way we can all know where Tesla is delivering. Um, so far, no deliveries in Massachusetts yet. No. So that's why we I haven't I check that every day, too. That's why we haven't gotten ours yet. Um, hopefully... We'll pick it up in Texas, hopefully Tesla. Hopefully the first truck that arrives in... Uh, Massachusetts is going to have our Seriously, customer. we'll come anywhere to pick yeah, it up. Please. We reviewed another EV charger over on our sister channel. Now let's review. There are so many things to think about when buying an EV charger. How many amps do you need? Is it going to be mounted inside a garage or outside? How long a charging cable do you want? Do you want a charger with an app to control it? Maybe a RFID card? We've been installing and using EV chargers for years now. And we've gotten our hands on dozens of different models, so we know what to look for in terms of build quality, ease of installation, and features. So if you're in the market for an EV charger, e-bike, e-scooter, so many other fun, sustainable electric products, make sure to subscribe to Now Let's Review. Oh, and by the way, we're giving away this EV charger. So to find out how you could win it, 
Head on over to the Knowledge Review channel and watch this week's video. And good luck. So you may remember that Chinese automaker Geely bought a controlling interest in the British sports car maker Lotus in 2017. Yeah, they paid $65 million, and in 2022, they opened a $1.2 billion factory in Wuhan, China, to build electric lotuses. Lotuses? Loti? Lotusai? <laughs> the first electric lotus, the Eletre. Hyper SUV debuted in the UK in March last year. We don't know how many they've sold so far. Their next EV, a four-door coupe, the all-electric GT Lotus Emia, is wrapping up testing and should start deliveries next month in China and early 2025 in the US. An impressive 0 to 60 in 2.78 seconds with dual motors putting out 905 horsepower with a top speed of 159 miles an hour using an 800 volt architecture. Those are the specs that we know about and of course the obligatory driving around in the snow video. Now does this really sell cars? I mean, I'm not trying to be hypocritical here. I know we're showing off Tesla's Norwegian ice driving video this week on Patreon Bonus Stories. But showing cars barreling around snowy roads, especially when they're driving too fast and appear to be losing control, I don't know, it just doesn't do much for me as a consumer. Okay, well, they're not losing control. They're they're drifting. Um, but I get it. Your average driver isn't going to be able to drift. And if they try to drift, they're just going to lose control. So I totally get it. But you tell us. I think that the starting price of $100,000 for this Lotus is already a non-starter, considering that you can buy a Tesla Model S for that price. Right. I mean, you can get a Model S Plaid starting at $89,990 with 359 miles of EPA rated range. We don't know much about the EMEA's range or charging speeds yet. Or where you can plug it in. Because we don't know if they're adopting NAX yet. Right. Nissan is stepping up its E-Van game with the introduction of the Interstar E, which is expected to be coming to Europe and North America. Nissan says the Interstar E exudes a truck feel. Its assertive front grille enhances the commanding presence of the vehicle. Okay. Uh, stats, please. Well, it's got a big front grille. Oh, my God. Come on, car companies. Uh, the 87 kilowatt hour battery pack should provide 286 miles or 460 kilometers of range. They don't tell us if that's EPA rated yet. Uh, that's going to be DC fast charging of 160 miles in 30 minutes. So that sounds like some pretty slow charging, like 100 kilowatt charging speed. Yeah, exactly, which isn't great. There will also be a 40 kilowatt hour battery, so smaller one for 124 miles or 200 kilometers of range. That'll just have level two charging, so you can charge up in four hours. Hmm. The payload is going to be 1.6 tons, so 3,525 pounds with 2,500 kilograms or 5,500 pounds of towing. The Interstar E is four inches longer than the NV series van, which many people know about. Now, I do really think that Nissan could do better in terms of charging and maybe even in terms of range. But I think that this could be a useful van for local contractors and tradesmen, especially in more suburban and urban settings where they don't need to drive as far. Yeah, I mean, the problem with the NV series was that it just had limited range. Now they've at least, they say, bumped it up to, you know, 100 miles more. That could be a game changer if it's true. And I'd love for anyone who first gets this to really test it out and let us know about what ranges you're getting. The other thing that I want to know more about is, do they have an inverter on it? Can you plug stuff in? Because it seems like... Don't if, get too picky here. <laughs> well, it's just, you know, if you're They making, made it four inches longer. <laughs> if you're making a van That's... like this, if you're making a van like this, at least allow me to plug in my This stuff. is Nissan we're talking about. All right. You're lucky to get All anything. All right. So remember how Elon reincorporated Twitter... Out of Delaware, moved that company to Nevada. He also just did it with Neuralink. Yesterday, Neuralink officially changed its state of incorporation from Delaware to Nevada. And Elon said all companies should move out of Delaware. I didn't know it was so easy to change states. I thought that like once you incorporated there, it was like... And you just need your shareholders to vote and then you can move. Oh. Uh, unless Delaware tries to stop you, which they are trying to do now for some reason. I don't know how they're stopping you. How? There's a fee before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> so we've talked about this a lot. Tesla is kind of like a university. Yeah, smart people work for Tesla and not only bring incredible knowledge and experience to bear on solving engineering and logistical problems there, but when they leave and move on to other careers, they bring those new skills and wisdoms that they gained at Tesla to bear on their next jobs. Case in point, Kurt Kelty, a former senior director of battery technology who worked at Tesla from the beginning, 2006 until 2017. Kelty went to work at a bunch of companies in the past few years, including Scylla Technologies, a battery company. Now GM has hired Kelty as their new VP of batteries to help them get their Ultium battery platform off the ground. And kind of proves what we've also talked about, that old school companies like GM often announce things that they don't really have yet, like the Ultium battery platform. Yeah, just announce that we have it and we'll figure it out later, okay? Uh, but sure, we only deal with 12-volt batteries. Don't worry, we'll figure it out. 
I mean, GM's Ultium cell production plant in Tennessee was delayed in October last year. It was supposed to be opened last year. Seven, count them, seven of GM's current models are depending on those Ultium cells, all of these. So this is important for GM to get the Ultium battery scaled up fast. Hopefully for GM, Kelty is the right person for the job. Um, good luck because you're going to be the only competent <laughs> person there. Wait, 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 wait. Slow, slow, slow down. Slow down. We need a committee for that, okay? We're going to do it by committee. I'm just talking about cathode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. We need to. Do we have a name for it yet? Ultium cathode. No, we already use Ultium. Hmm. Speaking of jobs at Tesla, Tesla now has posts for over 37 dojo project jobs. Most of those dojo jobs are located at Tesla's Palo Alto headquarters. There are also internships available in Palo Alto, Fremont, and Austin, Texas. So students, apply. And Tesla is going on a hiring spree in Mexico. After hiring Teresa Gutierrez as Tesla's country manager in Mexico, Tesla is now hiring a ton of new positions in sales and customer service in Mexico City, Monterrey, Nuevo Leon, and Puebla. Also, jobs in Mexico were posted in energy for solar and storage jobs. So Teresa Gutierrez has 20 years of experience working in strategic planning for companies like Nestle and Mattel, and now she's working at Tesla. Tesla is also hiring over 60 engineers to work on Optimus. Again, almost all of them in Palo Alto. Now, there's been some reporting by Bloomberg and Reuters that Tesla execs have been asking managers to affirm whether employees' positions were critical. And then, by their own reporting, they say that that is causing layoff fears. I love how... We're going we're gonna to make the headline a story and then another story. Now, I mean, I think it's pretty smart to regularly make sure that you don't have employees that aren't needed. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, huh? I'm sorry. Uh, what is it you do again? Oh, who, me? Oh, I was hired two years ago to integrate the new uh, Quabash and Frugal Retraction software. Yeah, we ditched that like 18 months ago. Yeah, I guess that's why I've been kind of not so busy for a while. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think if your company isn't doing that, you end up like Twitter was with like 8,000 employees, which then Elon whittled down to, what, 1,500? Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, we just heard about DocuSign. Uh, they have like six or 7,000 employees. It's DocuSign. Why do you need that many employees? Well, it's like, you know, how when you take your mouse and then you have to sign it. Yeah. That's... <laughs> we need 1,000 employees <laughs> for that. It's basically <laughs> MS Paint. But, uh, um, no, I this story, though... Isn't this, should this be happening in all companies? They're right. just going to, no, we just hire people. It's kind of like a jobs work thing. I was so. the coffee guy <laughs> and now we don't need me because we have a robot, but I'm still here. <laughs> I don't, I don't get what, it, isn't this, isn't this happening in all companies? Just, I, I think, think it is. I think when money was cheap, I think it is. It didn't happen. Next up is Ellie with our SpaceX update. Hey, Zach and Jesse, it's getting busy down at Starbase again with the full stack of Booster 10 and Ship 28 we are rapidly approaching flight three and I couldn't be more excited. So thanks to NASA Spaceflight for this video. However, we don't have the most important component, which is the FAA license to launch yet. However, SpaceX should still be on pace to get that license sometime in mid-February, maybe late February, and knowing how things usually roll, probably early March. However, while we're waiting for the third test flight, we are also seeing major progress on the second tower down at Starbase. That's right, Elon confirmed that they are going to have a second tower for operations, and four components of that tower were seen leaving Florida, the Space Coast, on their way to Texas to start construction and eventually have two towers. Also, if you're flying to Hawaii anytime soon, you are going to have a great flight if you want to watch movies, do business, surf the internet. That is because Starlink is finally being rolled out and offered on Hawaiian Airlines. They are the first major U.S. commercial airline to have Starlink available, and they explained why there was a bit of a delay in rolling this out. Apparently, the company is originally planned to begin installing the Starlink terminals last year, but CEO said that SpaceX needed to launch more next generation Starlink satellites and receive certification from the FAA before installation could begin. So this was probably a hurdle for any US based airlines trying to get Starlink, but we should be seeing it on more airlines soon since now Starlink is certified for aviation use in the US. And speaking of Starlink, SpaceX has been active on their X account. They shared this video. And here they explain with each launch of our second generation Starlink satellites, they add about 2.2 terabits per second of capacity to the constellation 
allowing them to improve coverage and connect more people all around the world with high-speed internet from space. So probably within the next month, we're going to see the third test flight of Starship. It really is looking that way, but we know that the dates can always slip and that's what you have to prepare for if you want to be in the business of watching rocket launches. However, in the meantime, you can assemble your own 3D printed Starship kit. This thing actually vents. It's a humidifier, but it is something that you could 3D print yourself. It's also something that you can assemble yourself like I did here. So I will leave a comment in the description of this video. Hopefully you guys will help me out by commenting on it so that you can get your own and also support my channel, Ellie in Space. Thank you so much for watching this update and I'll see you next week. Thanks, Ellie. So check in the comments below for the link to 3D print your very own Starship launch tower. Hopefully we pinned it properly so that you can find it. And if you do find it and it's not pinned, hit the like on it so that way it moves up the list. Elon just reposted that Starlink is now connecting communities all across the Caribbean, including on the island of Barbados. And speaking of Starlink, Elon just reposted the Starlink post. In the Starlink app, you can adjust the snow melt settings to your preferred mode, off, automatic, or preheat. What, do you think the people in Barbados really need this? Yeah, that's true. Well, maybe if you want to heat something up. <laughs> and in even more Starlink news, SpaceX has filed an application with the FCC to operate up to 12 12 Starlink ground stations on its autonomous spaceport drone ships in U.S. territorial waters in both North Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. This trial is to test the ability for Starlink traffic to be routed through these marine-mounted gateways. It could be super helpful for marine internet traffic, especially marine shipping and cruise companies. SpaceX says that the trial will run through June 29th of this year. Up to four of these Starlink gateways, which operate in the KA band, and which look like this when they're mounted on the ground, these would be mounted on each drone ship. So, I mean, are these really ground stations? No, I mean, they have been normally mounted on the ground, so we call them that. So we're going to have to come up with a new term. But my other question is, normally with a ground station, you know, you get all the wires and you hook them up. But on these autonomous drone ships, are they Maybe they have, have a wire hooked up underneath. They have wires <laughs> floating through the ocean? I don't know. That's a good question. And the SpaceX Dragon crew capsule mission Axiom 3, which was carrying four NASA astronauts back from the ISS, returned to Earth safely on Friday morning. These astronauts carried out more than 56 experiments during their 18-day mission aboard ISS. Isn't that nice? A positive story about SpaceX, an American company, bringing astronauts safely to and from the ISS from American soil, rather than having to pay for Russian Soyuz missions to do it. All right, it's time for Into the Future, sponsored by our friends at Henson Shaving. Thank you to Henson. You can use our code to get over 200 free shaves by using our discount code when you check out with your brand new Henson Shaver. Your face will thank you. Escape into the future. And now, Let's go into the future with Shell Oil Company and their amazing plans to install more and more hydrogen fueling stations to power automobiles. No, 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 no. I, I, Don't interrupt the future, young fool. This is the future of transportation we're talking about. Automobiles filling their tanks everywhere with clean, green hydrogen sourced from the finest hydrocarbons. Which, by the way, Shell makes a lot of. Hang on there, Shell promotion guy. First of all, Shell is not expanding their hydrogen fueling stations. In fact, they're permanently closing their California hydrogen stations. A Shell spokesperson said last week, Shell discontinued the build out of its light duty hydrogen station network in California in 2023. And after temporary closure of five of its seven light duty stations, made the decision to permanently close its light duty station network in California in early 2024. This was due to an number of market factors. Like the fact that nobody was using them. Why do I sense hostility in your voice, young lad? Aren't we both on the same team? Don't we both want clean, green hydrogen to power our automobiles? No. I'll make my power from the sun. Thank you very much. We at Shell get our power to make hydrogen from the sun, too. At least some of it. Well, first of all, you get the hydrogen from hydrocarbons that you drill out of the ground and get from natural gas. Then sometimes you use solar to make a wee bit of hydrogen for the cameras so that way you can greenwash what you're really doing. Former employees like Caroline Dennett, who worked for Shell for 11 years, have seen what you'd really do behind closed doors. Clean green hydrogen was just a greenwashing play for you. Besides, as you have even said, market factors have driven the demand for hydrogen down to the point where Toyota couldn't even come up with an excuse to make more hydrogen powered cars. So then I guess I can't interest you in a used BMW iX5 hydrogen car? Nope, I'll pass. How about a used Mercedes-Benz GLC F-Cell? I can get you a really good deal on that. Uh, no, not interested.
It's just that I can't find anywhere to fuel them anymore. I mean, now what am I supposed to do? Now, that would be a fun EV conversion project. Yeah, I mean, we we could buy a cheap used hydrogen fuel cell car because nobody wants them anymore. We rip out the fuel cells and replace the fuel cells with lithium batteries. They've already got the electric motors, right? So, yeah. I mean, Toyota sold about 11,000 Mirais in the U.S., mostly in, in California. So I bet wouldn't be hard to find one. So comment below if you have a Mirai gathering dust. And sorry, but... Uh, I, we we kind of knew this was going to happen. We told you. I kind of knew this was going to happen. For years, we knew yep. this was going to happen. And, you know, we do, oh, well, you weren't right immediately. Right. That's, that's how long-term, that's how it works. But anyway, let's move on to Going Green, sponsored by our friends at Climatize. Are you looking for a way to invest in solar projects across the U.S. while potentially earning up to 10% annually? No, I'm looking for a way to invest in (laughs) hydrogen. Our friends at Climatize let you do just that. They source solar projects in the need of capital every month using their networks of solar installers and developers and then onboard them to this, their Climatize platform. Which allows all of us to access these investments. Here's an example project. Ova Nova, a general contractor, is committed to uplifting rural communities by leveraging the Inflation Reduction Act. They're seeking to raise $309,000 for a project that has secured a grant by the U.S. Department of Agriculture under the Rural Energy for America program. The offering has a two-year term and an expected annual rate of return of 10%. Investors have already committed $2 million plus to solar projects via Climatize's platform this year. You can get started with as little as $10. And best of all, there are zero investor fees. Now, disclaimer, we're obviously not financial advisors. Please consult with a financial advisor before making any financial decisions. If you're interested in learning more, click the link below or use climatize.earth slash NYK to get started today. If you use our referral code NYK023, you will get a free $10 towards your first investment. All right, so remember when we visited Westport, Connecticut uh, a couple of years ago, and we did that episode where we talked with the police chief who bought a couple of Tesla Model 3s? Yeah, I mean, we got to do a ride-along with the Westport police in one of their Model 3s. Well, that episode may have influenced the Dartmouth College Department of Safety and Security who just bought four Tesla Model Ys for their police fleet. Really? So that's Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire? Yeah. Lieutenant Bradford Sargent says, I have seen some articles about different municipal police departments in New England using the Tesla Model Y. I thought for our purposes here on campus, that may be something that I'd like to take an exploratory look at. He then reached out to Wolfsboro, New Hampshire and Westport, Connecticut to ask how they were liking their new Tesla cruisers. And I guess he got the right answer because now more than half their fleet is going to be electric with just three Ford Explorers remaining, which they say they will also transition out of in a couple of years. The Dartmouth Energy Alliance helped to get Sargent the data they needed on EVs. And next was a Zoom call with Tesla. Caroline Mahoney, a junior at Dartmouth, who is a member of the Energy Alliance, says, We had a Zoom call with a rep from Tesla, which was interesting to hear a little bit of what they would be able to offer us as an institution. Teslas were one of the few vehicles that could actually deliver on a faster timeline. Well, thank you, Caroline and Bradford, for doing research and making this happen. Caroline said, I feel like coming in freshman year, you don't know that you can make a difference like this, but there's certainly so many avenues and so many people here who are excited to hear from students and excited to work with students to make things happen. Yeah, so it's awesome what just a few people can do and what sharing information does. This is the important part. When you share a video with someone, you never know how it's going to end. And so I just want to share with you again, if you haven't seen it before, our video where we actually interview a police chief about driving around in a Tesla Model 3. Yeah, and at the time that seemed crazy, but now all these police departments are doing it and they're all saving money. All right, it's time for Sunspots. So it may be winter, but Texas just broke its own record a couple weeks ago by generating more power from the sun than it has ever before done, according to its utility operator, ERCOT. So check this out. 15.2 gigawatts of solar was being generated at 10.09 a.m. on Sunday, January 28th. That is 36.1% of the electricity on the Texas electrical grid made by utility solar. That's enough power for over 3 million homes. And... That does not include rooftop solar in Texas. There are an estimated 30,000 rooftop solar systems installed in Texas, generating another 300 megawatts. So the sun was actually generating even more power that day. And I just want to point out that was in January. Now, Texas is number two in the nation in installed solar capacity at over 21.3 gigawatts. But this infographic from the Solar Energy Industries Association says 17 gigawatts. Yeah, that's 2022 data, and it's already wrong. I got my data directly from ERCOT as of three days ago. Solar is growing that fast. So if they just broke a record in January, 
I think we're going to be expecting records. Oh, it's going to be all year long. All year long. And then all and then forever, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Even probably on the on the downslope because they're going to be continually installing more solar. Exactly. Hey, and if you'd like to start breaking some records yourself by putting solar on your house, talk to our friends at Energy Pal. They know all the latest data. They know all the latest prices and all the latest rebates. Talk to them, save money. They'll do it all for free. Tell them Zach and Jesse sent you. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories. This is where you guys come in. We need your stories. Remember, send them to us two minutes or less. Shoot them in landscape, good audio, no music, and send them to hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. What do we got this week, Jess? Clint sent us this review about his Henson Razor. Hey, Zach and Jesse. This is Clint from Northern New Jersey. I wanted to say I love the Henson Razor. I've had it for over two years now. Uh, since you first had Daniel on, uh, your disruptive investing channel. Um, I have to shave every day for my job. I have, have had this job for 15 years. Um, after a long day, you know, I you know now after using the Henson razor, I don't have any uh, bumps or issues. Uh, after using the cartridge razor for the first 13 years of my career, uh, it, you, I would dread shaving. I really appreciate it. I love the little, uh, the little shoots that they have here cleans out the um the hair after you remove it works great looks as good as the day i bought it and it's already paid for itself thank you that's what you've been telling everybody that's what i've been saying that's awesome thank you so much for, for sending that in i really appreciate it all right time for patreon bonus stories this week we've got all the EV Super Bowl ads, including the anti-Tesla ones, and we're gonna pick our favorites, along with Investor Club bonus stories and so much more. So head on over to patreon.com slash now you know and support us for as little as a buck a month. Get all these Patreon bonus stories. You're really missing out if you don't join us. So come on, what's stopping you? We'll see you wonderful patrons on Patreon. All right, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories. It's time for the Patreon poll. Should Tesla be advertising on X? And uh, most people said, yeah. Sure, why not? (laughs) All right, it's time for Elon's X's of the week. And Kathy Wood started us off. She says, I believe the Delaware court decision forcing Tesla to void the March 2018 vote on Elon Musk's performance-based pay package is un-American, an assault on investor rights, and an insult to the board of directors of one of the most stunningly successful companies in U.S. history. And Elon Musk said, thank you. Doge Ventures says, careful, Kathy, if you make too much sense, they might come after your businesses next. And Kathy said the Delaware plaintiff lawyers did come after us, but brilliant attorney Jane Cantor had prepared us. So the big dogs walked away. I have asked my legal team to extract us from Delaware. Once was a beacon for entrepreneurs and investors in the U.S., but now a menace. Ooh. Nat Friedman says 10 months ago, we launched the Vesuvius Challenge to solve the ancient problem of the Herculaneum Papyri, a library of scrolls that were flash fried by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. Today, we are overjoyed to announce that our crazy project has succeeded. After 2,000 years, we can finally read the scrolls. And Elon said, this is cool. Musk Foundation will support this. I visited those scrolls when I was like six. I remember seeing the guy who was frozen in lava. Yeah. Scared the heck out of me. <laughs> and you didn't read the scroll. You didn't bother to read you the scrolls. You can't. They're huh? just carbonized. That's it's crazy. amazing that they're reading them now. New York Post posted Elon Musk's drug use led billionaire pal Larry Ellison to invite Tesla CEO to his Hawaiian home to drive out and penny 2x says quote according to a report by who the author's mom legacy media is a joke elon said i took my kids there for a family trip and to discuss strategic matters with larry ellison doge designer says x now has 112.9 billion visits in 2023 which beats out instagram and tiktok Epic Maps put out this map, the Mississippi River and its tributaries. And Elon said, wow. I said, wow, too. I I was like, what? My goodness. Peter St. Ange says the Uniparty just crapped out a border deal that trades war money for amnesty for millions of illegals while locking our open borders into law. The welfare warfare state is in full effect. The long game has replaced Americans with a brand new crop of voters who, going by history, dot, dot, dot. And Elon said there are some truly pathetic members of the GOP in Congress. He went on to say, Mark Cuban is an insufferable fool. Then he went on to say, many states automatically register anyone with a driver's license to vote. No citizenship verification. Ballots are then mailed out and ballot harvesters pick them up, mail them in, making fraud traceability impossible. 
And Tom Fitton said, fact check, Elon is correct. 24 states and D.C. have enacted or enabled automatic voter registration at DMVs and other government agencies. Such programs can result in dirty voting rolls, such as potentially increasing duplicate voter registrations. Ian says Taylor Swift has threatened legal action against Jack Sweeney, who created a website to track her private plane. Given that she has multiple stalkers who've endangered her life, I can't say I blame her. And Elon said Sweeney is an awful human being. Taylor Swift is right to be concerned. The rabbit hole says Reddit is an oligarchy. The fact that a small cabal of power moderators can fully control a narrative for millions of people is absolutely disgusting. You can't even mention it on Reddit. And so there's this thing, 92 out of the top 500 Reddit subs are controlled by just four people. And Elon said, true, that is very concentrated control. Vermont's Library says this week's paper discusses the difficulty of walking with a coffee mug without spilling coffee and examines various methods to prevent spills, including walking backwards and the claw hand grip. And Elon says slosh control is a real problem with liquid-fueled rockets. So I, w- I never thought about that. You just look at a rocket and you're like, oh, it's a big, it's a big thing. It's actually just a big coffee cup full, yeah. of, full of rocket fuel. Gina Carano says, today is an important day for me. I'm filing a lawsuit against Lucasfilms and Disney. Elon says, please let us know if you'd like us to join the lawsuit against Disney. Ian says, this is huge. Elon Musk and X have taken up Gina Carano's lawsuit against Disney for wrongful termination from The Mandalorian for exercising her free speech rights on social media. Elon says, can't wait to see the discovery on this one. It will be the mother load. And Elon went on to say, I expect this to be one of many lawsuits against Disney. They have been blatantly racist, sexist, and censorious for years, which means there's a vast treasure trove of emails, texts, Slack, etc. Disney has almost certainly broken the law thousands of times, no exaggeration. If you were discriminated against by Disney or its subsidiaries, ABC, ESPN, Marvel, etc., just reply to this post to receive legal support. And he said an anonymous source just sent me this from Disney. It is mandatory institutionalized racism and sexism. And Libs of TikTok said, Elon, can you buy Disney and fix it? Elon said, hmm. The Hotshot Wake Up says, you should see the Forest Service's new hiring policy plans. And Elon said, whoa. Kyle Bay says, the imbeciles writing the border bill snuck this beauty into the text. Aliens from non-contiguous countries shall not be included in the sum of aliens encountered. So Chinese, Somali, Yemeni, Russian, Iranian nationals encountered at the border simply won't be counted. And we're not going to count any of the aliens from outer space. Come on. And Elon said, who are the actual authors of this bill? I mean, who wrote these words, not the politicians? And Wokeness says, Biden, the only reason the border is not secure is Donald Trump. And Elon says, you are being gaslit. And then the rabbit hole put out this meme. And Elon said, truth is stranger than fiction. Strange days. Unlimited L says, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell declares the $118 billion border bill dead just two days after the deal was reached. Most of our members feel that we're not going to be able to make a law here. And Elon said, good. Zero Hedge says Senate GOP will block border deal, leaving Ukraine in limbo. Amazing. This is the first time a crowdsourced effort on X to read and find out what's in the bill before it's passed crippled an attempt by the Uniparty to shove more BS down America's throat. Vivek Ramaswamy says they call it a border bill, yet less than 20 percent is allocated to our border. And there's more money allocated to protecting Ukraine's border than our own. Typical swamp protocol. And Elon put the double exclamation marks. Wall Street Silver says, right now, Republican senators and House members are rushing to state their no votes because they can see everyone at X is against it. If Elon had not purchased X, I wonder if Twitter would now be censoring all opposition and Congress would be moving forward to pass amnesty. Craig Chamberlain says, allowing both sides to speak gives an unfair advantage to those of us who have truth and reason on our side, though. And Elon said true. Weaponization Committee says breaking Jim Jordan subpoenas the National Science Foundation for its role in the censorship of Americans. And Elon said the plot thickens. Jason Calacana says, when was the last time an American journalist interviewed Putin? I can't remember. Also, do we know if the State Department, various administrations have tried to stop the media from interviewing Putin historically? And Elon said, regarding point two, what's weird is how slavishly compliant Western media is to government, even without coercion. We do forget that all of our major journalists did interview Putin in the past. Zero Hedge says Grok should automatically summarize and highlight every single bill going through Congress. Trillions in pork and corruption will be saved. And Elon says, great idea. Ian says, if Tucker Carlson isn't careful, he could become the next Julian Assange. There will be no shortage of calls from both politicians and establishment media shills calling for his arrest over his visit to Russia. These creatures are nothing if not vindictive. Elon says, arrest those calling for his arrest. 
Kenakoa the Great says the corporate media is freaking out about Tucker Carlson interviewing Vladimir Putin. Yet history shows that the media has interviewed controversial figures in the past, like CNN with Osama bin Laden in 1997 or CBS with Saddam Hussein in 2003 or 60 Minutes with Putin in 2005. Elon says the American foreign policy track record since World War II. Even if you agree with the goals, it's terrible. Castro outlived every U.S. president that tried to kill him. The Ayatollah is still in charge of Iran. Kim Jong-un still rules North Korea, etc. Doge Designer says it's going to be the most watched interview of all time. And Elon said probably. Eli Burton, our friend Starman, says Putin is both a former KGB operative and master propagandist. Nothing out of his mouth is going to be the truth. It will be a pro-Russia and pro-Putin narrative calculated for the Western audience. Elon said, of course, but still. Catherine Boyle says, yes, Elon should definitely make the Texas Institute of Technology and Science real. Here's an idea of what it could look like. And then she gave a really cool um, summary of what she would do if she was in charge of it. And Elon said, pretty good start. Maybe put her in charge of it. Jim Rome says, the jungle is coming to X. And Elon said, another show coming to X. Farzad said, feature request, Elon. On long form posts, have grok powered button that automatically fixes all spelling typos on a post. Pretty please. And Elon said, coming. Greg Abbott. Governor of Texas says time is up for smugglers of illegal immigrants in Texas. A new law now takes effect that imposes a mandatory minimum sentence of 10 years for those smugglers. And Elon says, great. Unlimited L says breaking House Republicans fail to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas. And Elon says, hmm, not good. He then went on to say, is it time for Mitch to move on? Referring to Mitch McConnell. Brian says breaking the European Union is said to be seeking sanctions and a travel ban against Tucker Carlson for his interview with Russian President Vladimir Putin. I never thought I'd be defending Tucker Carlson so much. And Elon said, if true, this would be disturbing indeed. One may agree with Tucker or not, but he is a major American journalist, and such an action would greatly offend the American public. He went on to say, if I had a dollar for every time the media reported that one of my companies was going to die, I would never need to raise money. Amy posted this Tesla positive shareholder letter. And Elon said, thanks. By the way, I think you can go and sign the petition to be one of those uh, who signs the letter saying oh, nice. that you're a shareholder who's in favor of Tesla. Holmar's catalog says Lucid CEO compensation last year was $379 million. Tesla CEO compensation last year was zero. We live in a country where failure is rewarded and success is punished. Doge Designer says most launches in 2023, SpaceX. Most sold car in 2023, Tesla. Most downloaded app, X. And Elon says it's an honor to work with such great teams. Must never get complacent. Elon went on to say, in a few months, I will discontinue my phone number and only use X for texts and audio video calls. He said this year, the SpaceX Dragon spaceship will take astronauts the furthest that they've ever been from Earth in over half a century. Brian said, when do we eclipse the furthest we've ever gone? Elon said, Starship should be able to make it to the moon in less than five years. And then he posted this. It's feeling American. <laughs> Elon Musk said, cool idea to have samples of elemental materials. Titanium is a surprisingly poor thermal conductor and silver is the best. Carbon in diamond form beats everything by far. Even just mashing diamond dust into copper gives a big boost to its thermal conductivity. Lithium metal is so low density that it feels like you're holding styrofoam. So I guess Elon wants to have his own periodic table of elements uh, thing. <laughs> Maybe. Some of them are extremely dangerous, so... Doge Designer says Meta has suspended the Facebook and Instagram accounts tracking Taylor Swift's private jet, but the accounts tracking Elon Musk's private jet are still running on both Facebook and Instagram. And Elon said Zuck is a dick. Sir Doge of the Coin says pissing off Elon Musk is the worst business decision a company can make. Elon says no better friend, no worse enemy. Sulla. Yeah, it's a quote from the Roman... Uh... Emperor. Ah. Bill Ackman says, I'm sure all of us have had the experience of reading a story about a subject you know well and finding it replete with inaccuracies and falsehoods. One then turns the page and reads an article about a subject one knows less well and makes the mistake of believing that this is true. Autism Capital says you need to stop talking to journalists. It will never go the way you want, ever. We warned you about this. Stop. And Elon said, bullseye. And Elon said, I love puppies. Elon said a number of false news reports claim that SpaceX is selling Starlink terminals to Russia. This is categorically false. To the best of our knowledge, no Starlinks have been sold directly or indirectly to Russia. And Dare W says, best of our knowledge, would Starlink not know if a terminal was activated in Russia? Elon said Starlink satellites will not close the link in Russia. It's time for Community Mail Time. Community Mail Time. Remember, share your stories, your photos, your videos with us at hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. 
Travis spotted this Chevy Blazer EV at, at the Barrett Jackson Rock Block Party in Scottsdale, Arizona. Josh saw this BYD Dolphin in North Allerton, UK. Brent came across this purple wrapped Model 3 in Salt Lake City, Utah. Chris spotted this Fisker Ocean in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Carlton sent us this picture of the new 12 stall supercharger in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Yoo Joao spotted this BYD Seal in Brazil. T sent us this picture of the new Honda ENS1 that they saw. It's probably just one of them. Vaco spotted this Rivian R1T in Estonia. Estonia? What? A Rivian? <laughs> How'd they get that there? Mark spotted this catamaran with solar panels on it at Yacht Haven Grande in St. Thomas. David saw the Cybertruck and the Cyber Quad for Kids at the Tesla showroom in Manhasset, New York. Isaac found this all-electric uh, JAC. It's a Chinese company. Oh, JAC. Okay. Garrett spotted this EV bus in Las Vegas, Nevada. And Sean just took delivery of his new Model 3 Highland at the Tesla showroom in the Netherlands. All right, Sean. Congratulations. That's awesome. All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews. Let's see what we got out there in the world. Hey, Zach and Jesse, it's Renee Miedema in New Minus, Nova Scotia. This is the new eight stall version three superchargers here. Uh, just opened up. This is our very first supercharging experience. So very exciting for us. There's only the truck stop. And then across the street, there's maybe one restaurant down there. So as far as eats, yeah, kind of limited but still pretty handy. We're just off the highway here. So if you're driving around Nova Scotia, this is gonna work out really well. Um, but as far as convenience goes, yeah, I would rate this one probably uh, seven, I think. Um, not a whole heck of a lot to look at, just in this immediate area. So, but yeah, the uh, second supercharger in all the province. So I think that's pretty awesome. Hopefully we have more coming. Okay, now you know. Hey, Zach and Jesse, AJ and here and we are at a eight stall 250 kilowatt charging station here in Farmville, Virginia on our way to my mom, her grandma's birthday. Um, we are in a rented Model Y long range that we got from Hertz. And I would say um, I've had this for about like four days of renting, loving it so far. The little one is enjoying it as well too. <laughs> we are right behind a sheets over here so obviously plenty of food options as well um, we are kind of like in our own little area back here so very nice not a lot of crowded or anything like that but there are some other options but honestly with the sheets being right there you got a ton of food options we're right off of 460 East so really easy and I would probably say I, and it's a car wash. I might actually do that here in a second. But out of, I don't know, out of a 10, 10 being the highest number, how would you rate this, babe? A 9. A 9? Okay, so she says it's a 9. So, um, now you know. Say now you know. Now you know. <laughs> Hi, Zach and Jesse. Art Shalik here at the 12 stall, 250 kilowatt supercharger in Warsaw, North Carolina just north of Wilmington off of 24 and 40 in the uh, parking lot of a Smithfield's chicken barbecue. There's the McDonald's with restrooms across the street when that place isn't open and also a hotel and several other uh, fast food options in the area. No shopping, so uh, I'll give this a seven out of 10. Now you know. Hi, it's Zach and Jesse. This is Oz, the Sustainable Orange. I am currently doing an EV road trip around Europe, about 6,000 kilometers. We've driven down from Marseille, uh, from the UK, and we're currently traveling around the coast of the Mediterranean, up towards Pisa and on towards Florence and Rome. Uh, we're currently at Vizzero. It's a V2 supercharger, 150 kilowatts. Uh, there are eight here. And I think this might go down as one of the most beautiful supercharger locations, given its proximity to the mountains behind me and the marina, which is just down here. Tons of shops, tons of cafes, really beautiful location right on the Mediterranean coast. And so I would have to give this at least a nine out of 10. It's a stunning location, weather's beautiful and just gorgeous roads to get here. Now you know. 
I have to agree with that last one. I went to that one during our European road trip, mm -hmm. and it was at night, so I didn't get to see, but I saw all the lights. It was beautiful. I agree. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Yeah. Hey, if you want to put your own review in, go to our website, nowyouknowchannel.com. Um, we have a map there, and so it's really easy. To just upload it through YouTube, and then you can watch all the other videos of all the other supercharger reviews. All right, so what do we got for new superchargers in the world? We got the three stall in Shanghai. We got the eight stall in Pooler at Pooler Parkway, Georgia. We got the three stall in Guangzhou, China. We got the six stall in Hinshu, Taiwan. The six stall in Hangzhou, China. We have number 125 in Norway, the 24 stall in Bergen, Norway. Number 57 in Georgia is the 12 stall at Flowery Branch, Georgia. Number 97 in Taiwan is the six stall in Huilen, Taiwan. The 12 stall in Medway, eastbound UK. We have the four stall 120 kilowatt in Shanghai. We have number 1,991 in China, it's the eight stall in Shanghai. We have number 84 in Sweden, the 20 stall in Toxfor South, Sweden. The 12 stall in Medway, westbound UK. Number 153 in Texas is the 16 stall in Sealy, Texas. Number six in Malaysia is the six stall in Kuala Lumpur. The 12 stall in Salinas, California. Number 432 in California is the 16 stall in Capitola at 41st Avenue, California. Number 76 in Virginia is the eight stall in Abingdon, Virginia. And number 131 in the UK, 1,157 in Europe and 6,097 in the world is the eight stall at Kettering, UK. Now, if you haven't joined us on Patreon, please, please consider joining us for as little as a buck a month. Here's another reason to. Over on our Now Let's Review channel, we are going to be giving away a bunch of EV wall chargers that we just reviewed. We've already done this before, but we're doing it again. You can win them on Patreon. It's easy and the odds of winning are really good. A buck a month for the possibility to win an EV charger worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I mean, come on, beyond that, you get Patreon bonus stories, access to the polls, you can get t-shirts and credits and more. Remember, we can't do this without your support. Thank you for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week. Now, now you know. know.